Just as easy as the creation of techno music. Wait a minute, what key are we in? No, 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 none of that. Hey folks, Dr. Groovy Scott Grove from GroovyMusicLessons.com uh, coming back at you with uh, episode 714, I believe. Yeah, the Quaalude episode. Now we're just going back and doing some more classic country because that's what a lot of people have been digging lately that they can find it here. And thanks to all my new subscribers over on Facebook at GroovyMusicLessons.com where only the lessons are posted there, not all the other weird things that I have made. So, anyway, gonna do those old lessons, some of this stuff, as always, um, I have done before, but new stuff that I haven't, but it will incorporate both so that people who refuse to go back in time um, via the DeLorean and watch old videos, they can get some of those licks again. And yes, these are easy country licks that um, just work all the time. You can't mess these up in any key you stick them in. They're really easy, real ear friendly. And again, um, unless you're playing in a minor key to begin with, which you more than likely won't if you're playing old country, uh, then again, like I said, it'll serve you in every key and every song if you absolutely need to go there. Okay, so here we go. In the 1952 uh, Fender Flying V on this one. Okay, groovy, groovy, and groovy. Um, yeah, Fender ought to sue Gibson instead <laughs> uh, for the Flying V thing. Um, I dig it. Anyway, so uh, for all you people out there, just so you don't have to hear a bunch of yapping to see what the hell this video is about, um, I'll go ahead and use this backing track. Play along a few times with it to let you know what kind of licks we're doing, what they're going to be. And uh, you can opt out if you already know these or if you just don't dig them, alright? So, here's basically everything you'll be learning on this video. <laughs> So easy, um, great sounding ways to get from the 5, meaning the D chord, all the way back to the G is going to be the main focus here. Um, or you can do another one down, which will be... <laughs> that I'll throw it in too just because um, you just heard it and some people haven't heard that yet so that's what we'll do okay so starting in the beginning in the beginning Scott created Gatorade Zero mmm yummy no calories <laughs> not for this fat boy alrighty we are hydrated okay so any basic G lick will be fine. I were do I were doing. That there's some good old <laughs> country talking I were doing. Okay, so I was doing some basic just skip string things like this. So in G for that we'll go we're gonna skip the B string for those of you who don't know this. And we're gonna put that's right that one right there on the 7th fret, skip over with this on the high E string, also on the 7th fret. So there's, I'm finger picking through the whole thing. 
you do what you want and for those of you who know how to use a pick and play and not hit that B string you're just using the underside of this finger to stop it from ringing out okay so I'm using this then chromatically down meaning one fret at a time okay and then just switching it up to go on to three and to four okay or whatever you take I like to do it this way with the middle finger could take that one finger that was here and like I say the one finger which is this one if you're playing it the way I'm doing it yes I'm shaky I've got many diseases going on or ailments I should say not diseases <laughs> okay so and you could go to the seventh which is just simply lifting up that middle finger and adding your first finger okay and also right up here at the seventh fret we can bend our G string all the way up, a whole step, meaning two frets. Okay, so that's what that is. Okay, that's just basically one way you can do that whole thing, and many others. Um, if you want to, you could do it up here at the 12th fret and do it on the D and B string. And a cool way to do the G7, which it uses during the third bar, is if you're doing a D shape, is to turn that into a G7 via doing it backward just like a D and then a D7 where you do two on here, two on here and then a one right in the middle meaning first fret. Okay, same thing but up here at seven, skip a string seven and then six on the B string you can do that this way and go another cool way to do it if you're doing finger picking okay so that could even be okay there it is <laughs> Another thing, just little variations of what I was doing before. So when we did the, you can always just do. Okay, so that's another one. You saw that, you heard it. So check out the little fingers going here. That's just fifth fret on the C. Okay, doing those three strings, uh, D G B string. Let them all ring together. That's very cool. Just one fret back. Go to an F shape chord. Just an F. Move it up. Okay. That's kind of cool to do the same thing with. You could do. Or, what's really great, put your pinky on the fifth fret of the B string. That's a G6. Works great in western swing. Um, for those of you who have not been using this yet, this was on my very first DVD that I have for sale at GroovyMusicLessons.com, um, where you can always get 
200 plus hours of lessons downloaded for only $25. That's right, kids. Um, so the sixth chord. <laughs> How you could do a G7 with six chords. Sounds great. Mm. Tastes great, less filling. So you can take that whole G6. That's a great phrasing too. Um, just takes you from the G to G7, up to C. D. D7, back to G, G, G. So that was G6, all of them were six. Well, all this. Then one that looks like a D, and then another G6, and then another D shape. <laughs> okay, so lots of cool stuff there. Again, just ideas. Um, so you're going to have a lot of fun. Just, you know how to pause and rewind. And again, the C can go right here. If you want to keep doing those typical pedal steel type of things. I'm not using any pedals here at all. So there's no uh, volume pedal at my disposal. So, so if you're in the G... Okay, so that's how to use those. You're like, how was that? Um, one last time, we'll kind of counter or show it out and talk about it here as I'm going. The G thing we did. Alternating fingers. That seventh I showed you. The pre bend is cool. Then the C. G. Now two and two. Okay, so that. on the B, four on the D, and the same thing you were doing but just on different strings. So that is a ton of cool stuff that you can think of. So you can also do the D up here of course. We went to the G. You can do it. Something like that. So that's if you're on the D, which is up here at 10 and 11, 12, 13, 14. That's going up to 17 and 17. Before you go to 15 and 16. And what I actually did the first time was went from 17s to 19s. go back to that. Same thing as I'm doing on the G. Sounds real cool if you get it wet there because pedal steels like to play in that area. But you're not doing pedal steel stuff. But if you want to, there you go. Grab the vine pedal. Okay. So the first D thing yeah, I'm going right through them and then I'll put them together for the first one. It's going to be real easy. And this is what I basically want to base the lesson on are these D things, how to get from D back to uh, G. It's kind of like we just did, you know, with the... Or the um, D... way to get there. The other one I wanted to show you is this one. 
Okay, so we're doing what are double stops? That's what they're called. That means two flipping notes at the same time. I'm actually picking them together. You can pick them together if you want. But yeah, I'm doing the, the two fingers, just yanking them and spanking them and hitting them on the plank. Okay, that's what we call our telly, even though mine had a accident with a wood chipper. Anyway, so we're looking at 15 and 14 here. Okay, on the B and E string. Okay, so that's getting us down to our seven. So there's a little skip right after this first one. That there. And now we're going to go 12 and up. Oh, 12 and 10, sorry. Same thing, chromatically down. So, then after that, we're gonna go like this. Okay, so that's seven and six, and up to eight and seven. Which is just this, the D shape. Okay. So it's that kind of thing. Okay, so you could use all your little G things, you know. <laughs> okay, so again. See, sorry. So again, these are chromatic in the same shape. For these okay so you can hear that I'll play one of the licks we did and I'll use on the D okay getting back to the G here's the backing track with some of this I've shown you okay Part, I never leave you out on these where I went. Exactly is what I played. Um, is your typical brown eyed girl thing. If I can get it right. Um, but that's, yeah, these. Okay. Um, and it's great to play those off beat. Yeah, a beat off. Um, so we did. Okay. Yeah, it's slop for me, but it's good for you. Okay, so the second time around, um, as far as the D thing, which again is the main focus for me, any other licks are good for you, um, is a, uh, I think it was a Patty Loveless song. It was actually in A, actually it was in G sharp or A flat, one of the two. But, <laughs> uh, lying, cheating, barely beating, broken heart song from way back when. But the lick is... Okay, done a million times, but if you don't have that one in your uh, barnyard, you just don't have a flipping farm of licks, man. Okay, so we're gonna do the D string and the B string only, okay? So we're going to go from the D string, every lick will go from the D string with some kind of ascension and end with something on the B string or it'll be coming back down. 
So that's the way the first one actually goes. So we're going for the D string from 12, 13, 14. Yeah, that's my crazy vibrato. Okay, so I, I suggest you use these particular fingers to do it with two, one, two, and three, and then use two over here on the 15th fret to get your D note. And it's gonna be very crucial um, on how you do it. It's a, uh, if you're gonna do it with a swing type of thing, like we're using this backing track, but if you're gonna go or if you go go straightforward for four without the shuffle beat. Okay, but this here's the one we all like it on is these shuffles. So again, uh, 14, 15, 16. I just like to hit them this way as all hammer-ons, you do what you want. Okay, again, middle finger going up there and grabbing the 15th fret B string. Now just exactly backwards on the D string. I have to usually, if you're not real good with your um, pull-offs, uh, when I have a compressor on, I, it really helps it out. But I don't, just going straight in. So. It sounds great, as you can tell, picking every single note too. So this is a good one you can use a guitar pick on. Okay, so just backward. Uh, six, uh, but where were you at? <laughs> um, nine, 14, 15, 16, then 16, 15, 14. I get it. There at the 13th fret with my first finger. And then we gotta skip real quick down to this, which is at 10, 11, 12. And then just flatten out your 12th fret and hit the B string. Backward. Flattened out, so it's... And lastly, we're going to do 7, 8, 9. Same as we did up here. Same thing here. So you can actually go. So again, and that sets you up, like I said. I like to do the big wide sweeps and not sweep picking, but. up to those um, you could just do whatever you want okay okay so you can always go just like right here to the G okay or you can go open D that's what I'm looking for finish it out that way and go a triad okay so we can do the triad whatever you want okay so that's a cool one so we'll do these with the uh, licks we've already learned
how that one rolls. Another great one. Same basic principle and same phrasing. It's just another place to do it. We all like another place to do it. Even if it's the same old one to do it with, we're, we like to do it different places. <laughs> or the very first one we did was... I didn't even tell you about those two clicks. Okay, so those are nice. So, for uh, rhythm sake and keeping you on tempo, um, it's good to show you that. So, there's another little click there. Um, so this next one coming out of D back to the one will be on the G string and B string And exactly the same everything as that last one chromatic two three so from seven six five so Two of those Now we're gonna go four and three The same as the other, as far as the way it sounds and everything, it's just lower. Okay, so that's D and G, four, three, to five, and four to end it on G. Okay, so again, how to get to those. And you can do all this stuff. Um, anywhere. <laughs> You'll never do it that low, but you can take that um, anyway and as uh, far away from that as you want. So again. And again. there 12th fret or uh, fifth fret for the G's and of course if you're in D seventh fret but that's fourth third second or D G B above the headstock with your B string Just if you have a telly headstock or a strat headstock you're fine if you have a tilt back headstock you cannot do these <laughs> okay and coming backward a string so that actually ends up doing that b note way to end a song okay okay groovy stuff and again if you're in a D So, same things, but with the two clicks. One click, two, so one click again, two, one click. Cool. Okay. Or 
even the whole way. Go do it. That's very cool. <laughs> just real quick, it's just cool to go. <laughs> okay, so the one with this, another little lick. <laughs> about as far as I'm going to go I want to just like I said throw a whole bunch of those licks at you okay so now let's go ahead and do um, the backing tracks so you can just have them okay let you jam on them for a few minutes here we go <laughs>
There's that. Okay, we're going topside to say bye. Okay, just uh, just give me a second so I can put away all my guitars. Hey, folks. Okay, I hope you dug it. I taught that because I wanted to. <laughs> I thought you needed it. Well, I know a couple people who wanted it, so I gave it to them. So you're welcome, and you over there. In Zimbabwe, and once again, on the great folks of Croatia. Getting a lot of stuff from Croatia. Um, anyway, <laughs> you guys stay groovy. If you're wondering, hey, how you doing? You look better. Uh, well, thanks, but <laughs> yeah, the whole health question, how you doing? Not worth the crap, kids. Uh, again, fat, 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 fat from just laying in bed. Um, that wore me out just doing the lesson. But anyway, yeah, lots of more stuff going wrong with the old guy. Just turned 55 October 20th. Yeah, happy late birthday. Uh, you don't have to write, so I don't have to write. Thank you, back. <laughs> um, yeah, they even I'm even doing the uh, CD, not CDB, that's Charlie Daniels band. CBD <laughs> oil stuff, but with no, um, no fun stuff to get me loopy. It just gives me dry mouth is all. Um, but that helps me... A little bit with the pain thing, so I'm just trying that for a month to see how it goes. 75 bucks for a little thousand milligram bottle of that. Um, so, may or may not work for some of you, but hey, on those sleepless nights, it puts me to sleep, so that's groovy. Um, so, hey, um, I will get up out of bed whenever I can. I'm not going to last much longer if I stay at this pace and stay in bed, so I got to do something. But in the meantime, don't worry about me. I'll be here or I won't. But... I'm up today, okay? So, um, you guys stay groovy. I'll keep on being groovy, and I'll catch you the next time. All right? Hey, here's a little something. Check this out. Okay, just for fun, um, found uh, some of my old band buddies, which wasn't hard at all, um, and asked them, since I had lost everything that I had had in storage, um, photos, blah, 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 all the way down to my baby teeth <laughs> and a bunch of moves and deaths in the family and so forth. I started asking some of them, man, you still got any old albums or records or anything that we did way back when? So first of all, Richie Hastings, one of our very first uh, lead guitar players. Um, he started off as a bass player and then became the lead guitar player way back when. And in, it took us all the way up to uh, Oh, and we had Phil and Gary, also Jenkins, from back in Greenfield, Indiana, in the band as well. But this would have been like ninth grade in school, so grade nine, um, this little 45. So, oh, who were we? The Royal Aces. Um, that band stayed together for 12 to 15 years, something like that. Did a lot together. Uh, the drummer slash singer, um, Gerald Boger, uh, Gerald Boger, Gerald Clifford Boger Jr. <laughs> changed his name to Gary West via Tommy Cash. Um, when we had worked with him, he had asked him about a name because he was going to move to Nashville and do that stuff. So he did move down there, changed his name to Gary West, easier to pronounce, and went on to, you know, play the... He started, you know, doing police work and so forth and demos and then he started doing the Opry um, quite regularly and play, play with a whole bunch of people. He's still out there doing a Johnny Cash tribute show. You can find him anywhere. Uh, so yeah, Gary West, look him up, just put uh, For the Love of Cash and see some great stuff he's done. And uh, two of my old bandmates are still there, so the bass player and then the guy who's up front playing guitar singing and go check them out great stuff same guys that were on this from 1980 recorded in greenfield indiana and this lovely album yes this is me right here this skinny guy look i'm as thick as my arm is now <laughs> i had the there's no such thing as a good perm but yeah i had that lovely perm way back then i didn't know you were supposed to like uh gel it and pick it and style it it was just a big fuzzy mess um let's see so yeah that's the guy that's doing the cash thing here's the bass player that's with them he was actually dead for 17 minutes a few years ago but hey he's back playing bass now i think he's not dead anymore 
and it's taking a jab at your ex. Uh, and there's Brent. Okay, anyway, so yeah, for this uh, thing, we had to do the cover and did many, many photos, as you could tell. This was done in where? St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Um, see, I was actually dating a girl named Julie at the time. Um, Julie Blackburn, and now Gary West, um, has married her in the past couple of years and has residency in Minnesota as well as Nashville. So go check Gary West out and the bass player Rex. And you guys could talk about the old days too with us. Um, in this particular photo, Brent, he had his own clothes. Everybody else had clothes, but my mom was oh so wild in the ninth grade days. <laughs> Always buying me um, parachute pants and the uh, spandex and everything from Victoria's Secret. Yeah, I'm proud. Anyway, but all the clothes, even the hat and the skinny shiny tie and these clothes, uh, all mine. I don't know how they got in them, but at least the shirts are mine. <laughs> it just kind of turned out that way. Um, I had the groovy clothes. That's right. So I just thought some of you might enjoy that. Yeah, I beat anorexia. That's to, um, bought a few shirts like that to account for the fact that I am up to 207 pounds now because of my fat ass in the, uh, <laughs> bed all the time. But I felt like getting up tonight, November 3rd, 2019. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this I got it new in the box real recently. My buddy Terry Bart uh, got some videos of he and I playing and singing together here on the channel if you want to check it out. Um, he told me this one was finally on sale. So Fender put out these G-Deck amplifiers before the Mustangs came out. So they have, you know, things in here and a lot of backing tracks already in them. It's got a tan and a tweet down in there so that the uh, wave files play and sound good and don't just sound like they're coming through the speaker so it's full fidelity. But they made a blues amp, a heavy metal amp, and a country amp at one time. And I always just wanted to get this one like Terry's. As you can see here, it is -da, like a leather cover that is paisley so if you maybe get up here you, there you go you can see how it's covered da, 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 da. so i thought that was awesome had to have one even more than paisley it's paisley and floral with the uh groovy front end on it all the rest of them just remain black after this but yeah the uh, heavy metal one was a uh, black and gray camouflage and the blues one no it wasn't blue <laughs> i can't remember what it was you can find it here on youtube somewhere um but anyway yeah that's what we're going to use today in case somebody says what were you using for an amplifier i showed you up front so yeah pre mustang amp that's what that is